now let's move on to some fun and games. Some well, are fun and games, right? Yeah. Now, we talked a bit about this on the last show. I haven't put up the video for that yet. But we did miss a couple of shows because we did not know if they were renewed or not yet. I made a prediction. You made the prediction that all of them would be renewed. Except... Family Food Fight. And it has come to fruition. It was just recently announced via Variety that every single show from Summer Fun and Games has been renewed. That is Pressure Luck, Card Sharks, Match Game, To Tell the Truth, Celebrity Family Feud, The $100,000 Pyramid, Holy Moly. We're missing one. You miss- no, I don't think you got, you got them all. Family Food Fight has yet to be renewed, and that was part of Summer Fun and Games on Thursday nights along with Holy Moly. Yeah, that was the fun, interesting block I remember, because it was Holy Moly, then Family Food Fight on the on the Curry two-hour block. Yeah. And then, but the flip was that if you were watching Fox at the time, it was, uh, you can watch MasterChef and then Spin the Wheel. Yeah. Now, I think MasterChef got renewed. I think Spin the Wheel is still up in the air. So it was like, if you love cooking shows, you could watch MasterChef and then flip to Family Food Fight. But they almost had the same numbers. So that's telling me something, that the numbers for Family Food Fight were not the same as that of MasterChef. They didn't have the same acclaim, I guess. No. Um, and plus, family food competitions don't really draw that well. And that, that must have been the case. Um, which is kind of, I mean, like, I'm not going to do a whole retrospective on Family Food Fight, but... I, I think the the number should have been there. Like, look at all of the food competition shows that have ever aired on network television in the last six years. Aside from Master Chef and maybe Hell's Kitchen, not a lot of cooking shows survive. Uh, the Food Fighters with Adam Richman. No, that w- that didn't last. I think the problem is it's got its niche. It's got I mean, its niche on My favorite food one now. was The Taste. My favorite was The Taste, and that didn't last. No, I think it only lasted a season, if that. Two seasons. Oh, got two seasons. They had okay. two seasons of that, and one was they moved it to Sundays. So. Mm. Yeah, that was the death knell. I'm on Teen Bourdain. <laughs> May he rest uh, in peace. Uh, but yeah, like the, the, the cooking format, it's a niche. And I think if you're going to watch a cooking competition show, you're going to watch it on Food Network or on Netflix. Or Bravo. Or Bravo. You're going to watch Top Chef. You're yeah. going to watch Chopped. Uh, you're going to watch Iron Chef um, if they're bringing that back. Yep. Or you're going to watch Master Chef, Master Chef Junior, Hell's Kitchen on Fox. It, like to add another one to the mix is a little t- it's to me a cooking competition show is no different than a singing show like that's your talent your talent's cooking your talent's singing yeah and it's the and it's the creative side of this that's supposed to be the interesting part that you the viewer when you're watching you get a backstory on the food and then you can watch that and go maybe i can do that you know if they can do it maybe i can right and well, you order DoorDash. Like everyone <laughs> else. Or you just make a frozen pizza. Mmm. Red Baron. Uh, so it's it's this... To me, that's what makes these shows so fascinating. That, like, a singing show. Well, there's American Idol, The Voice. Yep. That it's, you can't really do so many now. You have to have the one specific... No, those are the only two. And, well, you have America's Got Talent. And America's Most Musical Family on Nickelodeon. Yeah, but you're dealing with a different style. Because the no, voice in American Idol are for solo artists, whereas American Family, that's a, a group. That's a group. And also, then you have uh, Rhythm and Flow on Netflix, which I will say, uh, zoom in, that's one of my top five game shows of this year. Really? Yes. Wow. Because I think that was one of the best singing competition mm-hmm. shows out there and very underrated. Yeah. Uh, 
Now, was that rap or... That was rap and hip-hop. When Cardi B was there, you had a lot of big-name rappers. It was like The Voice, but rap. Okay, so... The, and which is something that historically doesn't do well on a pop or rock-driven uh, group show like The Voice or American Idol. It doesn't. And MTV used to try and get into that, and then they kind of fizzled that out. And then you had things like love and hip hop and kind of they're trying to get into hip hop in in a style format. But Rhythm and Flow has the scenery. It has the set. It has the background. It had character development. It had the backstory. It had everything that you are familiar with in these shows. Continuing with like they even had stars be the judges. (laughs) They had competitions, freestyle. They had like all sorts of great ideas. And it's like, no one's really talking about how brilliant this show is. And this is kind of weird because this could be as big as The Voice in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it'll be as big as The Voice. But then again, it is Netflix, so it'll get a second season. That will be it will definitely. Well, I don't. Well, it's Netflix. It'll get a second season and then get canceled. So <laughs> that's what I just said. It, it will. And, but, oh, man, that's such a good show. And when we have cooking shows and singing shows, it's that one niche or the two shows, and that's it. You can't just start beating the drum. That's why I think you people need to remember, like, if when there was Deal or No Deal and then everyone tried to do a luck-based game show, no, there can only be one Deal or No Deal. You can't really start making a new version of that. Well, the thing is, they tried to combine general knowledge questions with luck, and the problem of that is we'll use Show Me the Money as the shining example. They, hi- they casted gimmicks. They casted personalities. And what they didn't cast for is contestants having like a small amount of brain power. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. There was also other great shows like Set for Life. Now that was purely luck based, and it was bad. Uh, then you had. Uh, did you ever see the? Did you? I mean, Secret Fortune was a thing in the UK. Never saw Secret Fortune. Okay, so it was basically like a trivia show mixed with luck. Where it was, if you get the question furthest, you knock out the biggest amount. But if you get the the closest, you knock out the least amount, and you would mm-hmm. play it back and forth. It was, and then there was take it or leave it. I mean, the UK really went overboard on luck base for a while there. Yeah, like golden balls, for example. Hey, I liked golden balls. Uh, glad you did. I didn't. It was then split again... with steel. <laughs> Then again, but, you know everybody knows my opinions on the prisoner's dilemma. I I mean, I'm with you on the prisoner's dilemma. I think there needs to be like a consequence added to it. Like I think if you both and you lose, it should be you both lose and the host gets the money or the audience splits the money or some sort of like the money has to go somewhere. It can't just be you leave with nothing. The idea that I had for golden balls is that there'd be Instead of split, still there'd be six big balls. And inside one of them would be jackpot. 50%, 40%, 30%, 20%, or 10%. And a killer. Oh, okay. Or should I say jackpot, 75, 50, 25, 10, killer. Okay. And... But it's the amount to how many killers did you take into the, the final round? Did you uh, take with you? All right, so then there becomes a bit of luck and deception that if you were lying and bluffing your way into the final and you had, like, two, you would have two kill. Okay, that's clever. Right, because if, you, if you're top five and if two of them were killers, so it would be jackpot... 75, 50, and three killers. Ouch. Uh, so, back to the subject at hand here. It's the 
there's niches and niches and niche and niche and niche and niche and the cooking show would in this case family food fight uh there's already a lot of family cooking shows out there yep. and none of them good but uh, it's the i mean curry was okay i guess graham is obviously a great judge yeah he got poached for master chef but it's the well mm, uh and and I will and I will still say it. None of you, none of it's better than than Cutthroat Kitchen. That's the true cooking show. Mm-hmm. Give me Alton Brown. Give me Bob's. Give me get bigger ingredients in in these in this coffin. But right now, the best one is Chopped. I mean, well, the one no, Chopped is now, right now. I would say Chopped is the Jeopardy of. Yeah. Uh, Cooking shows. That show's gonna if 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 they do not mess up that format, that show will last at least fifteen years more, at least fifteen. Absolutely. And Ted's only like forty five or fifty, so he'll still be around. And he still has that same personality as he did in like the first season. Like I watched like early first season Chopped compared to newer ones, and while they still have like, while they now refine like Alex Garnaschelli as a judge and like what's in the mystery boxes. Yep. Well, you it's, sure as hell aren't going to refine her as a host. Jesus Christ, she's I, I will have you know that Supermarket Stakeout took place at my supermarket. Did you actually partake? Thankfully, no. I was <laughs> at work. If you ever see, I saw that, I know where that Gelson's is. I know where that Bristol Farms is. I know those places. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, those places are the upscale supermarket. That's like the twenty dollar block of cheese. Do you think I can afford that? I, don't I go know in there for the bakery and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> I want my little treat. I want my little cupcake and get out of there. <laughs> little cupcake I don't want to hold a cupcake and then get barraged by a camera crew. Hey, I'll give you fifty bucks for the cupcake. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. Here's the cupcake for fifty bucks. Oh, fifty dollars! But I wanted a cupcake. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, to me, I, I I think that's also a big issue. I have a lot of uh, modern formats that I've been reading. It's they all keep following that similar format. Yeah, it's just copying chopped. Or or um, I mean, there's like Floored coming to Quibi, for instance. Huh. Oh, you haven't heard? Liza Koshy has a new game show coming soon called Floored. Okay. It's a dance show, and then it's like, but the floor moves, so they could fall down, go boom. (laughs) Thank God I don't have Quibi. Don't worry, it's not out till April 2020. Oh, good. Advanced to miss it. Anyway. When when Jeffrey Katzenberg and Matt Whitman work together in Silicon Valley and Hollywood, create the next Go Ninety. Oh Jesus! Ugh. What could possibly go wrong? Everything. All right. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so happy Car Trucks is back. I'm very happy. You know how much I love Car Trucks and Press Your Luck. Let's I'm hope so they excited. fix Car Trucks. I'm crossing my fingers. I want. I love card sharks. I want. I'm also happy pyramids back. But then again, I thought that was the guarantee show that would be returning. But then, for it turns out, holy moly, was the guarantee. I to me that was the shocker. That's the one where it's like I couldn't predict that. I thought that was going to be the maybe they would pair it up in April May. Like if they were going to bring it back, make that the post NBA finals show before going into summer fun and games, but sure. Seven it's got the highest ratings, seven million. And like it's I don't it wasn't even like fans of Steph Curry, it was or fans of Rob Riggle. It was kinda like it kind of was like a familiar cause the wipeout territory because the wipeout ranch. But it was and also it was... the uh the format itself, which was golf. And, it's fun and then for the it whole was family. like once they explain like well if they fall or they do the wipeout they lose they get a stroke it's a one stroke penalty yeah it becomes like oh now I get it that's clever mm-hmm. and then the challenge producers kind of messed up some of the courses and it's like oh 
Some are my favorites, some are not my favorites, and I'm pretty sure, I'm very confident, they're going to make it much better for season two. I will agree. 